I'm Wally Robinson, WNW News, on the Sears Mystery Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. Where's Vietnam? It's right next door to Thailand, where my girlfriend, Siri Kit, came from. <laughs> this is the lady from Bangkok, the one you almost married? Right. Say, man, you, you got a good memory. Yes, Siri Kit, I, I really cared a lot for that woman. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Here's a message from your Kidney Foundation. Have you ever stood in line, my friend? Not for hours, but for years on end. Not waiting for a ticket for a show you want to see. But just for the chance to live life normally. Waiting for the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Give the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Somewhere someone depends on you. You can give the gift of life and help someone who depends on you by becoming an organ donor. You can sign a special line on your driver's license or get an organ donor card from your kidney foundation. A moment to sign could mean a lifetime to others. Remember, we're talking about life. Pass it on, pass it on. Give the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Somewhere someone depends on you. This is Andy Griffith. Listen. All right, up and at him. Ungrip them pillars. Come on, off and on. Off your bunks and on your feet. All right, let's hit it. Formation in five minutes. The time is the recent past, and the story is about a man, a soldier named Steele. Or rather, it's the story of a two-day pass that was stretched into three days, as seen through the fuzzy eyeballs of a buddy of his. The reason for me referring to the fuzz in his eyes will become obvious as we march along. Still, nobody ever called him Conroy, was an army cook attached to the 52nd Civil Affairs Group, Fort Gordon, Georgia, whenever he was an AWOL, which was fairly often. We get into a ticklish area here. Some people will say as soon as you make a generalization about any member of a minority group that you're stereotyping, or worse yet, you're prejudiced. Well, as a so-called minority member myself, I'll go out on a limb and say, I think some people in all groups do fit some stereotypes with no loss of dignity or anything, as long as the stereotype isn't intentionally degrading. Still, my buddy Steele was a West Indian, a brother from St. Thomas in the Virgin Island. And he was, I think, what a lot of people feel West Indians are really like. Warm, temperamental, full of life. He was a fantastic storyteller. Spell that liar. A really fine cook, army or not. A generous friend, a heartbreaker. It was his boast that he had left him smiling on three continents and twelve islands as well as being one of the heaviest drinking dunes I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. His first question when we got into town was, Who's bumping, man? With an accent that was so lyrical it sounded like singing. I remember a weekend with Steele that almost left me with the need to be pumped. But how? As you all know, this is the morning police call, which means I want you men to go over this area... Pick up every gum wrapper, bottle top, scrap of paper, and cigarette butt you see. If you can move it, pick it up. Otherwise, we'll come back through here and paint it. All right, move on! Which is just about the way the day started. The day which somehow or other became more than a day. What just now happened, really, is that our story has just begun. <laughs> Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of 
the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, A Weekend Pass by Odie Hawkins. Our stars, Brock Peters and Robert Doki. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. Thumbs up. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. Thumbs up. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Thumbs up. Get them trim cut, regular cut. Even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Dirt inside your shock absorbers can cause them to fail. Get Sears Heavy Duty Plus Shocks with a self-cleaning wiper ring. On sale now, only $7.99 each. You save 20%. Installation available. And save now on Sears Super Guard Steel Belted Radial Tires. Steel Belted Strength, Smooth Ride, Radial Performance. Super Values, too. Save $40 to $76 on a set of four. Sale ends June 30th at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. We've often been told that an army marches on its belly. Uh, by that I mean what goes into the men makes a march. But no one has ever explained what happened to the army when it's cook's night off. Or what the cook does once he's free of the kitchen. <laughs> Steele had gotten a couple of hundred dollars in back pay. The pumping began as soon as he received the money. He corralled Jack Skid, Bobo McKinnon, Sergeant Jackson, and myself to go to the service club. It was on a Friday night, a typical peacetime U.S. Army Friday night in 1964. Jack Skid, our resident poet, after eight whiskey sours. I know everyone sitting at this table has always wanted to know why monkeys stay in trees, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was no getting around it. After a certain number of whiskey sours, Jack had to tell us why monkeys lived in trees. Wait, Jack. Hold on to your monkeys. Let's everybody have another round first. Waitress! Yeah? Can I take your order again? Another round for my friends. Oh, oh looks like <laughs> good sergeant has decided to take ten on us. Down in the jungle where the tall grass grow, live one of the most sarcastic monkeys the world would ever know. One day he happened to struggle up a tree to snow a little bit and dream up something new for his wit. Everybody got a taste? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt her. <clears throat> Down on the ground lived a lion who knew he was king. The monkey spied the lion and said, trying to put evil into his head, Hey, lion, there's a big tough dude living over there, and the way he talks about you would put gray in your hair. From what he says, he ain't your friend, and he sees your body as something to bend. The only reason I'm telling you this is because I'm really your friend. Some friend that is, eh, man? Yeah, Mr. Lion, he talked about you in a scandalous way, and that's all I've got to say. Now, the lion took off like a 44 out to even the score. He ran through the jungle like death on a breeze, knocking down all the coconuts off the trees. The lion stalked an elephant from behind, thinking he'd give him a pretty rough time. The elephant checked the lion out from the corner of his eyes and said, Look, lion, you better pick on somebody your size. The lion wouldn't listen to reason and made a slash and beat him to the ground with one mouth. Mighty smash. Oh, man, I left. Left. 
Left, right, and <laughs> They fought all night and half the day, and I still don't see how the lion got away. But he finally dragged off more dead than alive, leaving himself wide open for more of the monkey's jive. Hey, Mr. Lion, you really look sad. The other fella must have really been bad. When you left here, you were roaring like you was going to eat somebody up. Now look at you. You were all beat up. The monkey hopping with glee jumped up and down. His foot missed the limb, and he plunged to the ground. The lion was on him with all four feet, angry enough to grind him into hamburger meat. The monkey looked up with tears in his eyes and said, Please, Mr. Lion, I apologize. If you let me go, I'll tell you something you really ought to know. Mr. Lion lived lifted up a paw and the monkey scampered up a tree. What I wanted to tell you, he screamed from the tree, I'll put the elephant on you again if you mess with me. <laughs> the lion stalked away growling, are you just talking? Up in them trees is where you better stay. And that's where they are till this very day. <laughs> so there. Once again, we find out what keeps lions on the ground. Elephants. Oh, come on, you guys. I kind of like to find out why the monkeys live in trees every now and then. Where just... <laughs> okay, it's okay, Steele, my friend. I can take it. Another round? Yes, and a double for our poet friend's kid. Yeah, Jack, you know, uh, I've always been puzzled by one thing that happens in that monkey poem. What's that? Why would you choose the biggest creature in the jungle, the elephant, for the lion to mess with? <laughs> because incongruity is the soul of humor, Brother Bobo, as every good comedian knows. Incon who? Incongruity. <laughs> I feel I just have to pause here for a moment to say a few words about something. I've been in a lot of groovy situations, but I don't think anything can equal the good vibes of a group of soldiers off duty. I look around the table, over the rims of hundreds of glasses, at Sergeant Jackson. Sergeant Jackson has been in a couple of wars, and he has ribbons and decorations to prove it. But he doesn't swagger around acting heroic or anything, if you know what I mean. Right now, he's checking his eyelids for holes. <laughs> and my buddy, still? Well... He was up to something, which I didn't know anything of. Not at that time. Here they come. More values from Sears. Like $1.44 pull-on shorts and $1.99 tank tops for women. They're colorful polyester tank tops that slip on neatly over the double-knit nylon shorts. Shorts with elastic waist and stitch front creases. Just watch them go. Sears $1.44 shorts and $1.99 tank tops for women. All set for action. Hurry in while quantities last. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Sears wants to break the ice when it comes to buying a Kenmore refrigerator. So we're taking $50 to $100 off three models through June 30th. You save $100 on the 19 cubic foot side-by-side -side and $70 on the 17 cubic foot top freezer refrigerator. Both have automatic ice makers and Sears exclusive humid drawer. Save $50 on a Kenmore 17 cubic foot refrigerator freezer without ice maker. All are frostless. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. It's here! It's here! The Great American Paint Sale is here! Now, save three to five dollars on the same Sears paints that help preserve the homes of John Paul Jones, Betsy Ross, and other great American homes like yours. Save five dollars on Weatherbeater satin exterior paints, now $9.99 a gallon. Save three dollars on Easy Living flat, ceiling, and semi-gloss interior paints, $8.99 to $9.99 a gallon. The Great American Paint Sale is here! Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. We left them in the service club, and they haven't retreated one single sip. And sergeant Jackson never forgets that he is a sergeant, even while he's semi-asleep. Ain't no sense in going home. Jody's got your girl and gone. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Cadence count. One, two, three, four. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
as you can hear, he's always thinking of the troops. Jack Skid, whom we care about having a name like Skid, is our poet in residence, in a manner of speaking, and the company's communications specialist. This guy can take a bunch of metal scraps, a couple of coat hangers and a coil of wire, spit on the whole business, and build a radio that could reach the South Pole. I've seen him do it. Well, not the South Pole, but he did wake some poor dude up in West Texas once. Good morning, Mr. J. Bird. I came to buy your wings to fly over to Mrs. Bootsy's house to hear Mrs. Bootsy sing. Mrs. Bootsy has a new little baby, and when the baby cries, she rocks the baby in a cradle and feeds him apple pies. <clears throat> Sometimes Jack's poetry doesn't quite receive the recognition he feels it deserves. Okay, okay, if you Claudettes didn't like that, how about this one? Roses are red, violets are blue. <laughs> Great guy, always. His poetry, well, that's a different story. Bobo McKinnon is an ex-Golden Glove title holder from Philadelphia, 147 pounds. I think you suspect that he'd held some kind of title just from looking at the muscles this dude had. He's one of the few human beings I've ever seen with a set of muscles between thumb and forefinger. Great guy, but you wouldn't want to make him mad about anything. And still, Conroy Raphael Steele. Waitress, you slowing down, sweetheart? How about another round? <laughs> Do you guys know you probably set a new service club record for whiskey sours consumed in a four-hour period? Why What's not? the record for fours and daiquiris? Huh? Now, that's typically steel. Not quite satisfied to settle for the easy way. I mean, you get the impression that he merges fantasy and reality better than most people. Okay, so there I was, me and a couple of good friends. Rum and coke? No, man, these were people. Anyway, there we are in the middle of this cane field. Moon as bright as morning, machetes in hand, slashing and fighting with a whole troop of ghosts. A troop of what? <laughs> you heard the man, he said ghosts. Right, Steel? Right. We had just about gotten the best of them before they, they piled up, pull off this flanking movement over to the left. Oh, <laughs> see what I mean? You never quite know whether he's pulling your leg or not. The only time you can be absolutely certain he's not putting you on is when he cooks or talks about cooking. How did I become a cook? Yeah, how? Look, simple. I took one look at my first breakfast of creamed beef on toast in basic training, and I thought to myself, Hey, Steve, you can do better than that, so I become a cook. <laughs> no, 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 let me tell the truth now. That, that's not exactly the way it happened. I had this buddy of mine who was General Porter's personal chef. Remember him? Oh, oh, oh yeah, well, I, I, rem I remember him. We, we used to call him old Pity Patty mm -hmm. Porter That's because right. he was always sneaking around Pity Patter. <laughs> That's yeah. the one. That's the one. Yeah. Well, well, my buddy Johnny Wolf was, yeah. was about to lose his cushy job because he was running out of ideas for meals. And he asked me to help. Well, if the truth be told, Johnny Wolf never had a giant imagination to start <laughs> with, you know. Well, how did he know that you knew anything about cooking? Oh, oh we knew each other from back home. Well, it... Even if I must say so myself, I, I had a pretty big reputation in St. Thomas, you know. Anyway, I saved his job by making poulet basque. Poulet who? Poulet basque. Basque chicken, man. Hey, you know, speaking of strange food and all, I've been dying to ask somebody, who are these little Chinese guys walking around the post holding hands? Oh, for goodness sakes, Bo, you're worse than that than my Uncle Wally. Don't you know by now that all the yellow people ain't Chinese? Those guys are Vietnamese. They're here for signal school training. Okay, so they're Vietnamese, whatever that is. But what's with this hand-holding bit? Just a custom, old buddy. <laughs> they just have a different sense of values about stuff like that. Where's Vietnam? It's right next door to Thailand, where my girlfriend, Siri Kit, came from. <laughs> this is the lady from Bangkok, the one you almost married? Right. Say, man, you, you got a good memory. Yes, Siri Kit, I, I really cared a lot for that woman. I think she was the only woman I ever met who could cook better than me. <laughs> I was attached to the American embassy in Bangkok. 
Somebody had passed the word to the ambassador that I made the best vatapa this side of Rio de Janeiro. Come on, Steel, play fast. Speak English. What's this vatatopa stuff? Vatapam. My poetic friend is a Brazilian dish. It's chicken stewed in coconut milk, seasoned with sliced shrimps, uh -huh. onion, red pepper, and olive oil. Oh, anyway, right. the ambassador whose last post had been in Brazil finagled me onto the embassy staff because he had fallen in love with Brazilian food. And that's how I met Siri Grit. Hey, 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 w wait a minute. Something is missing here. I thought we were talking about Vietnam. Last call, last call, last, last call, call, Jay. What's hey, 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 what's What's going on around here? This is it, the end. Thank goodness. Well, wait, wait, wait. One more round before you throw us out. Come on, one more. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. What in the World Happened in June, brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. June is admissions day for New Hampshire and Virginia, admitted in 1788, Kentucky in 1792, Tennessee in 1796, Arkansas in 1836, and West Virginia in 1863 as our 35th state. The Continental Congress appointed a committee to draft the Declaration of Independence in June of 1776. In June of 1782, the design for the Great Seal of the United States was adopted by Congress. The U.S. Navy Yard at Portsmouth, New Hampshire, was purchased in June of 1800. The first course in flight instruction was started in June of 1925 at the U.S. Naval Academy. In June of 1935, the self-help organization Alcoholics Anonymous was created. In June of 1966, the U.S. achieved the first soft landing on the moon. What in the World Happened in June is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter who will answer your questions about Navy opportunity or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Quiet, man. Listen, and you'll hear it. I don't hear anything. It came from the bow. A canaan and the sobbing of a little child. And then it changed as I went forward to look. I swear it came aboard and... It went down. Down below. I was afraid, but I followed it. Oh, doctor, I tell you, it went right into the captain's cabin. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. At this point, undergoing their ritualistic last round, everyone seems to be pretty much the worst for wear except Smith and Steele. Smith has been doing a Houdini sleight of hand with the whiskey sour glasses that magically placed them squarely in front of Sergeant Jackson, which might explain why he is uh, hors de combat, or shall, shall I say bombed. Steele? Steele seems to be just starting his evening. And while they've all known his capacity for this sort of thing, they have to wonder why it's different this time. Okay, that's that. Only 12 o'clock and we're out in the night. What now? Well, I've heard it. I mean, me too, and I think I speak for the good sergeant draped over my back. Oh, well, what about you, buddy -o? Well, I, um, uh... Brip, brip, let, let, let's leave these dead beats and go on pumping in town. I'm kind of low on cash, Steel. I only have... Hey, man, we ain't talking cash. We're talking about pumping. Let's grab a post-taxi and go. Come on. The sense of challenge swelled up in my chest. Realizing that it seemed likely that I was going to be taken through the test of a steel weekend... One I only suspected at that time would be a record setter. When our friends shook hands with me leaving the service club, 
Even Sergeant Jackson unbent for the departure scene. They seem to look at me in the way people look at other people who are obviously about to do something they wouldn't do. Back then in 1964, a medium-sized town in South Georgia wasn't much of a great place for a couple of black soldiers to go and party the night away. Grinette Street was where it was, and there wasn't much to that. Three clubs, the Top Hat, the Paramount, and the DeSoto. Steele, playing with the laws of averages, tossed a two-headed nickel and decided from the DeSoto Club. We grabbed a table and Steele ordered a brand of scotch I had never heard of, nor had the waitress. We settled for rum and cokes. Well, here we go, buddy Roses are red, violets may be blue, and if either one of us has got to go to heaven, I think it'll be you, with all due respect, <laughs> Dr. Steele. My condition at this point was, how shall I say it, a bit unstable. Steele, Steele was in good shape. His fingers looked pickled the way they were curled up, but there was nothing wrong with the rest of them. You, you, you got to be on your guard when you come in here. These women will dance your socks off. How about some refreshments? <laughs> two o'clock now, closing time. Two o'clock, people. Now, time to call it a night. Hey, what is this? Every place I go, they close it up. Fortunately for me, the bar closed at 2 a.m. I don't think I could have been able to hang in there a minute longer. The bartender, wise to how reluctant troops on a weekend pass were to give it up, nudged us out with a sawed-off pool cue in his big fat ass. I think he was anxious to get home for dinner. 2 a.m. Saturday morning, slightly tipsy to put it mildly. No place to sleep. In the soft, south Georgian evening that was loaded with fragrances of wisteria and mint and magnolia and now surrendered to a cold, impersonal, shirt-flapping northern breeze. I shivered and made a delicate inquiry. Okay, Steele, where do we sleep tonight? You know something, man? I could never understand what it was made Harry Belafonte so popular. What? Belafonte. You know the Calypso singer. What about Belafonte? Well, I mean, aside from the fact that the man had nice teeth and used to show his belly button a lot, I, I never thought too much of his singing, you know. Take a song like Matilda. How, it, how did it go now? Matilda, Matilda, she take me money, run Venezuela. Matilda, 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 she take me money and you will give me Hey, that's great, man, that vibrato. Let, let's take it all the way. Come, oh, come. no, look, Steve, <laughs> I'm freezing. Hey, hey, there's a closed-in porch. Why don't we go and sit inside? Sure, why not, you know? You know, Mama, look a boo-boo. Oh, uh, no, not really. Uh, well, it goes. Look. I wonder why nobody don't like me. Maybe it's the fact that I am ugly. That, uh, and then there's the banana boat song. Man, I love that one. Oh, let me see. How it go now? Um, uh, I, I take it you boys missed the bus back to camp. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, we didn't mean to... Yes, sir. I, I, we didn't mean to wake anybody up. Well, everybody. you did, but... That's beside the point. It's pretty chilly outside. Why don't you boys come on inside? We got a sofa, and one of y'all can sleep on a bunch of warm quilts, and the other can make a pallet with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Williams. Williams is my name. Mr. Williams, we certainly want to thank you. I don't think I had one more song in my body. Oh, I understand. I was in the service myself a while back. And I've done my share of singing. Hey, here are the quilts, sir. Who sleeps on the floor? Why don't we flip for it? With your two-headed nickel? Heads. I got the sofa. <laughs> Saturday morning. My mouth tasted like a bowl of ashes. I knew it was the next day and that the sun was probably shining which made me want to keep my glazed eyeballs away from bright lights of any kind. And my head felt as though a half-track was practicing maneuvers inside. Finally, I worked up the nerve to squint over the lump of quilt around my neck and saw Steele and Mr. Williams sitting at a table in the other room, sipping what looked suspiciously to me like bourbon. 
Hey, you awake, man? Come on in here. Mr. Williams is telling me about what Paris was like right after the First World War. Come in here and have an eye opener. Steele had been up long enough to have charmed his way into our host's liquor supply. He could do that, charm people, that is. I pulled myself off the floor, staggered into the bathroom to splash water on my aching head. Then bravely marched into the living room for a half glass of eye opener. It tasted vaguely like soapy water and iodine. Yeah, I'm telling you, young man, there's never been another time like it in the history of the world. Oh, uh, this is my wife, Martha. Good morning. I heard y'all singing last night. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Williams. Morning, Miss Williams. Now then, tell me, how will you young men like eggs scramble? Sunny side up? Oh, I, I'd like oh, mine. Oh, no, 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 thank you, Mrs. Williams. We got to be going, and, and we're late already. Well, no trouble. We usually have a late breakfast on Saturday. All I have to do is crack up with a few more eggshells. You wouldn't be putting us out none. That's really nice of you, Mrs. Williams, but we really must go. Oh, we'd certainly like to thank you for giving us a place to sleep. Oh, forget it. Like I was telling Steele, I know a little about what it's like to be stranded. Well, if you won't stay for breakfast, take this bag of biscuits with you. I'm sure y'all don't get homemade biscuits up at that camp. <laughs> <laughs> Not once in a hundred years, Mrs. Williams. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So y'all come on by next time you're in town, yeah? And maybe we can pull out the old checkerboard. Thank you. Bye. Thanks Take again. Easy. Why didn't you want to stay for breakfast? My stomach feels like a cave. Mine too, buddy. Oh, <laughs> Eat a biscuit. Why? Well, ho hold on, man. I'll tell you. I woke up this morning with a powerful thirst, my mouth drier than a desert. Went into the refrigerator for some ice, you know, to cool my burning throat. And there was practically nothing in the fridge but ice cubes and eggs. We would have been eating all their chow if we had eaten breakfast. Oh, I didn't know that. Some old people are like that, proud, you know. I left 20 bucks under the sugar bowl knowing that they would have been insulted if we tried to pay them for their hospitality. Yeah, you're right. You can tell what kind of people they are. However, my stomach still craves them. Where is that place? Somewhere near here. Oh, 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 I remember. It's in the next block. What are you talking about? What's in the next block? There's a guy down the street here who makes some of the most fantastic scrap iron you ever tasted. Scrap iron? Ugh, I don't even like the name. You got to try it, man. He usually runs off a bat on Friday and is gone by Saturday night. Come on. If, if we're lucky, he'll still have some. But what about food? Every Everything in its time, my friend. Everything in its time. We compromised. And in the next block, he disappeared up a little dirt path that seemed to lead nowhere and returned with a half-pint bottle of scrap iron. It was about 1.30 before we finished off a great lunch of gumbo filet at Mom's place, chased by slugs of scrap iron and red soda pop. Steele and the owner of the establishment exchanged a few recipes and it was time to return to the bar. I have to confess, by this time I was beginning to feel that the whole number was some kind of weird challenge, something I couldn't back away from, but I was determined to finish this weekend somehow, no matter what. We wandered into the Top Hat, the swankiest bar on Gwinnett Street, and ordered rum and coats. Beware. A problem is approaching us. Hi, you today, Mr. Conroy Raphael Steele. Oh, 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 hi, Marcin. What's happening? I'm fine, as you can see. This is my friend, Della Crook. Well, this here is Herb Smith. Meet Miss Marcin Wright. Hi. Well, are you going to ask us to join you or not? Well, certainly. By all means. Sit, 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 sit down. Uh, garçon. Refreshments for the ladies. What will, what will you have? A, a, a taste of the bubbly? Caviar? A bottle of mom? Oh, come on, Steele. Knock it off. I'll have cold beer. How about you, Delamay? Beer sounds okay. 
two of your very coldest beers for the ladies and, and two more of your superb rum and cokes for me and my buddy. Well, how you been, Marcy? Not so hot. I thought you said you was going to call me about the raffle tickets. Why are you so quiet? I'm practically exhausted. From what? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Aha, refreshments. Well, here's looking at me, kids. Still, what about those tickets? Remember you said... But I thought you said the raffle was last week. You didn't hear me tell you no such thing as that. I told you this week and you promised to buy four tickets from me. Uh, go on, tell me. What are you so exhausted from? Marcine, I have been buying tickets from you for two years for one thing or the other, and I ain't never come close to winning nothing. But still, you promised. I'm exhausted from a rare form of disease. It's called stick with steel I didn't promise nothing. Is it catching? Yes, you did too, Steel. Not unless you wanted to be. I know when I promise something and when I don't. And I didn't promise. If it's one thing I hate worse than clabber milk, it's a liar. Who are you calling a liar, woman? If the shoe fits, put it on. Come on, Della. Let's go someplace that's not infested by liars. Well, I gotta run. Hope I see you again. How about right here? <laughs> Why don't we hang out at bars? Why don't you call me? Careful, honey. If he hangs around with old fuck Tom, he bears care for watching. I'll call you, Della. Looking forward to hearing from you. Bye. <laughs> Take it easy, Marcine. You and your wolf tickets. <laughs> Still, did you promise to buy some tickets or not? I'm almost certain I did. You did? Probably, but then I always promise Marcine something. She's one of those kinds of people who lives from one promise to the next. Believe me, man, it's okay, but when I first met her, she made me promise to buy her a car. What did you? Oh, on my pay? Be serious, man. How about another round? Waitress! <laughs> They wear them in Alaska, in Texas, in Maine. Wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears Tough Skins, the toughest jeans in Sears Tough Jeans territory. Fashioned from a permapressed tri-blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears Tough Skins in boys' and girls' sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish, too. You have tough kids, Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. The room held several Sears brass-plated lamps. One switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The gleaming brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Dirt inside your shock absorbers can cause them to fail. Get Sears Heavy Duty Plus Shocks with a self-cleaning wiper ring. On sale now, only $7.99 each. You save 20%. Installation available. And save now on Sears SuperGuard steel-belted radial tires. Steel-belted strength, smooth ride, radial performance. Super values, too. Save $40 to $76 on a set of four. Sale ends June 30th at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop and Sears! Andy Griffith with the concluding act of A Weekend Pass. Peaceful thoughts. My eyes are wide open and I'm staring at a dim light bulb at the end of a black cord. The bulb is naked except for circling balls of gnats. The bugs are making me dizzy with their motions. And with my eyes closed, I feel dizzier still. Great. Fantastic. Nothing like life inside of merry-go-round. I practice opening and closing my eyes slowly to see whether I can create some order out of what's happening. 
I can't remember whether or not I'm sitting or standing or riding or what. I managed to figure it out. After a few minutes of hard calculation that I must be sprawled on my back or else I wouldn't be able to look up. Wonderful. Now things are beginning to fit. If I'm looking up, then my feet must be stretched out in front of me somewhere. Yes, sure enough, there they are, propped up against the door. Honey, you're going to be in there much longer. The rest of us girls have to powder our noses, too. The rest of us girls? What's going on here? Oh, no. I'm laying on the floor in the ladies' room of some kind of semi-private club that no one but Steele and the members could know anything about. Now it comes back to me. Hot, tired, and ossified, coming into a pleasantly scented room with little carpeting on the floor, I decided to take a little siesta. Uh, well, I'll be. Oh, the clover's really going downhill. Boom, sleeping in the ladies' room. Oh, oh, oh ex uh, excuse me, ladies. I'm sorry. I oh. mean, uh, um, uh, hey, where you been, man? I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I needed a breath of fresh air. I, I, I took a little walk. Oh, I was just wondering, thought maybe you had flaked out on me. No, 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 I'm not me. <laughs> hey, uh, what time's it getting to be? Uh, what day is it? Well, it's, it's Monday evening, man. And we're gonna catch it for being a wall. AWOL? M Monday? I mean, what happened to Saturday night? Sunday? I mean, what happened to Sunday? To be certain, a lot of us have had the urge to get rid of some days, especially the kind that starts off badly and gets progressively worse. But what happens when you realize that you have lost a whole day when you're on a bus going back to camp? Steel wasn't exactly sure, but he felt pretty certain that we'd gone to an Elks Club dance on Saturday night or an illegal cockfight in the country or a raffle. The lucky or... number is something Steel ain't got. Or all three. And a church picnic on Sunday, polished off by a 12-hour nap on the shore of Clark Lake, stuffed with ham, macaroni salad, baked beans, coleslaw, barbecue ribs, spinach and collards, and wedges of peach cobbler. That late bus back to camp bouncing my insides around made me feel slightly seasick. It doesn't matter how late we get back, we'll probably be shot at dawn anyway. This is no joking matter, Steele. You know the captain's really been cracking down on people for being AWOL. I know, man, I know. Here, have a little taste of white lightning. It, it'll make the bullets hurt less. White what? Why lightning? It's guaranteed to cure or kill whatever ails you, including fear of punishment for being a wall. Steel, you are positively, absolutely unreal. Attention, Private First Class Smith. A report has been placed on my desk concerning you. The report says, and I quote, Private First Class Smith, attached to the 52nd Civil Affairs Unit of the United States Army, and one of the best equipped and disciplined, I might add, willfully and with malice aforethought, absented himself from his unit without official leave on this Monday pass, 30 June 1964, to be exact. In less official language, Private Smith, you are guilty of stealing yourself on government time. The penalties for theft of government issue, GI, are as follows. For each minute stolen, you are to forfeit one day's pay. For each hour stolen, you are ordered to stand guard duty for an equivalent day. And for the whole day, you must pay the ultimate penalty. Oh, no, no, no! <coughs> All right, up and out of Let's ungrip them pillars. Oh, up and out. Right. Come on, let's hit it. Formation in five minutes. Well, well, well. I wouldn't have believed 
believed it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. Smith, are you actually awake for change? You mean I won't have to blast my little bitty old whistle in your ear as usual? I woke up a little earlier than usual and couldn't sleep. It'd be great if you had insomnia all the time. It'd save lungs. All right, you men. Let's get a move on. Captain Ham ain't got time to wait for sluggards. Well, needless to say, I tried to take what used to be called a low profile. Straighten up there, Private. Stomach in, chest out, shoulders back. Your left. Your left. Your left. Right. Left. You had a good home when you left. You're right. Sand off. One, two. Sand off. Three, four. Cadence count. One, two, three, four. Woman just like me. Santa, one, two, Santa, three, four. By the time we had finished morning police call, attended a compulsory class on military justice, and reviewed the procedures for a coming field exercise, I was beginning to feel absolutely paranoid. I decided to skip app afternoon child because I had to find my buddy Steel. Whoa, where you rushing to, old bean? Jack, you seen Steel? I saw him rushing over to the PX about ten minutes ago. What are you guys running around like maniacs for? I don't know why he's running around, but I'm running around to find him, to find out why I haven't been put on report for being AWOL Monday. Oh, that. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> Nothing, really. Don't sweat the AWOL bit. I had CQ Monday, so I marked you down. Hospital. Acute intestinal disturbance. <laughs> uh, are you okay, OB? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay now. <laughs> Woo! I thought... <laughs> well, never mind. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate the favor. No big thing. What did you guys do in town? Must have been pretty interesting to hold you over for a day. Oh, we had a couple of drinks, you know, the usual thing. <laughs> Wait up! Wait up for me, man! Steel, where have you been all day? I've been looking all over for you. I've been... I've been going through post-clearance procedures. Now, wait a minute. Slow down. What are you talking about? What kind of punishment did you get for Monday? Hey, let's start there. Jack covered for me. Now, what about you? Monday? AWOL? No problem. I have to teach the captain's wife how to make quiche by here before I leave. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But what's this clearance procedure stuff? You're leaving? I'm going home, ma'am. I'm going home. I got a two-week leave on account of my orders to ship out to Vietnam. Vietnam? Yeah, Vietnam. Listen, we're going to meet down at the club at six o'clock for a little bump in. To celebrate my departure. Are you coming? Yeah, Steele, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> but didn't we already celebrate that? Smith survived another ferocious round of pumping to once again celebrate Conroy Raphael Steele's new assignment. Steele survived Vietnam, returned to the Virgin Islands, and opened a very popular and very good restaurant called La Chateau Steele. He asked you to drop in and have a drop on the house. I'm out of control. Be cool, be natural, take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great, I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new. 
at larger Sears retail stores. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. When is a window more than a window? When it's decorated with elegant Spindrift semi-sheer panel curtains from Sears. Sears Spindrift semi-shears are so natural looking. The fabric is full bodied. The pattern texture is soft and subtle. I had to choose curtains for my new house. Spindrift semi-shears come in so many colors and can be used to create so many styles. They're easy to care for. Machine wash and tumble dry. Hmm, that's nice. Make your windows more than just windows with Spindrift semi-shear curtains in the drapery department at larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guarantee or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. A Weekend Pass was written by Odie Hawkins, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our stars were Brock Peters and Robert Doki. Featured in the cast were Robin Braxton, Jack Crucian, Nick Latour, Peggy Weber, Barney Phillips, Helen Martin, and Jim Mapp. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CVI. Do you know how many books written today have titles that start with the words how to? Sure. How to lose weight, how to make a fortune, win new friends, and on and on. Well, how about one that tells how to safeguard your children's eyesight through early and regular examinations? How to protect your family's eyes against injury in sports, at work, in school, and at home through the use of protective eyewear. How to guard against glaucoma through more frequent eye exams after age 35. And how cataracts can be successfully corrected by surgery. The National Society to Prevent Blindness says that knowledge of how to guard against blindness is something every family should be informed about because, after all, half of all blindness can be prevented. How to find out more about the preventable side of blindness? Write Prevent Blindness, 79 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. They wrote the book. That's Prevent Blindness, 79 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Who are those people in the uniforms over there? Oh, that's the Salvation Army. Oh, sure. I've heard of the Salvation Army before. Everybody knows them. Yeah, they're noted for helping people. You know, my father once told me that the Salvation Army operated service units during World War II for our armed forces. He never forgot them for that. They were really helpful. I wonder if they help people in other ways. I'm sure they do. Let's ask them. Excuse me, sir. What are some of the services available at the Salvation Army? Well, throughout America, the Salvation Army operates daycare centers, adult rehabilitation centers for alcoholics, summer camps for kids, even senior citizen clubs and programs. Oh, the list goes on and on. Well, thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it. The pleasure's mine. Have a nice day. Gee, I had no idea the Salvation Army provided all those services for people. The Salvation Army cares about you. If you need help with a problem or can help, call your local Salvation Army today. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Let's listen. Nobody's seen hiding a hair of Beauregard Henshaw. You two know it. Now, Mr. Henshaw... You think we're hiding him here on the farm? You want to search like you did before? You didn't find him here then, and you won't find him here now. 
So be sure and tune in tomorrow to Sears Radio Theater. On WNEW Metro Media Radio, New York.